Welcome to NAFA's Advisor Today podcast series, where we focus on how financial advisors work, live, and give to their local communities and our greater financial services industry. Now, let's get started with the show. Hi, everyone. So great to see everyone. And uh, we have a wonderful guest today. Welcome to the Advisors Today's podcast, where we focus on the, the growth and development of all advisors as a collective hold. I'm here with my wonderful co-host, Suzanne Carawan. Hi, Suzanne. Hey, Chris. Good to be here. It's so good to see you. And we have a wonderful guest who I know you're going to introduce today. But I, we look forward to to, to learning um, some amazing things today about activity, activity management, how to create processes and systems, and what are some of the tools that we could utilize going forward. So Suzanne, who is our wonderful um, guest today and also who is sponsoring this wonderful program? So I'm delighted to introduce Mickey Straub from Sales Activity Management. We crossed paths because of NAFA. Uh, I believe Joe Templin introduced us, so thank you, Joe. So this is NAFA members doing business with NAFA members. Uh, we got to talking. We have all sorts of, let's call it divine connections, but all sorts of interesting things in there about how we can work together. And it just seemed a total natural to bring the SAM planner into the NAFA membership, the community, make sure everybody knows that these tools are available. And then to really be able to do more work together, because we're really interested in building out the member benefits portfolio for our members to make sure that they're the absolute best that they can be under our talent development center and our business performance center. And so Mickey Straub is here as the CEO and founder. So Mickey, thanks for being on and we're delighted to do this. And we had so many things. I had no idea that Chris Gandy is like a raving fan before we even got going. He's like, what are you kidding me? Of course we know. So wherever you want to kick that off, Chris. So Mickey, it's, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure to know that you've meant so much in people's lives and they probably don't even know you know, how much you meant. Right. And so, uh, so, you know, when I, when I think of Mickey, right, I think, uh, Hey, Mickey, you're so fine. You're so fine. You both <laughs> um, comes to mind, but you're fine for other reasons. So Mickey, tell us a little bit about you and the, and the, and, and the Sam and the Sam, I mean, I'm not going to steer your thunder, but tell us a little bit about the Sam calendars and tell us a little bit about why this is so important in the lives of advisors no matter what level of success you're having. You know, I, yeah, thanks, Chris. I that tee up, but you know, you'll be a better person to, to actually express that because you, you've seen it first, firsthand. But let me kind of introduce it to initially. Now I was a, I was an insurance agent. To, I tell people I was, I was an, I was an agent for 16 years. I was two agent, two years as a federal agent and 14 years as a, as, a, as, a, as an insurance agent. And I launched this company because we saw a lot of talented people going by the wayside. I, and I, I went out to seek the answer. You know, I try to find out, you know, how can we help those new Asians succeed? These, these talented people, you know, what's happening with them? And uh, I became a time management or a, a junkie, if you will, and and went to all the seminars and used all different planners and came to the realization that uh, uh, that 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 you can't manage time; you can only manage activity. And that activity management uh, was been used in this industry for decades. I mean, people long before I came along. People that uh, that a lot of people have heard about Al Graham, but they, they haven't necessarily heard of Frank Fetcher, or even uh, Dr. Albert Ian Gray kind of referred to it as uh, indirectly when it comes to you know doing the right things. Uh, uh, there's a guy over at uh, Mirror Prize or Mirror Express Financial Advisory back in the day, Doug Lennick, had a system around activity management. New York Life did as well. So I wasn't the first one to discover it, but what we did is we packaged it and customized it around our clients. Uh, and gave them really to empower them to succeed. Uh, the whole the whole goal of it was to empower agents to succeed. I had myself on mute. I apologize. So, Mickey, you know, but you know, being in the business now for twenty, you know, I just heard to my side. I started in ninety nine, and so the Sam calendar's been around for a while. And if you came from one of those mutual companies, right? It was part of the culture, right? It was part of the culture, but you guys have taken it to a new level, right? And and so we were joking because I said, everybody who joins my organization gets what I call the playbook. So they get this 
SAM calendar and they're required to keep it with them. Like literally like, so I played sports and I remember our coach said, you got to learn the plays. Right. If you don't learn the plays, you can't play. And so this was not only the, the, the playbook, but it's the, it's the statistical book that allows for people to actually experience process and procedure regularly. So question, you guys have taken it to a new level though. Now, what is so? What is most people don't know. I can see it behind you, but what is Sam? What does Sam stand for, and why is activity important? Well, Sam stands for Sales Activity Management, and it came about because I finally asked myself, what do I do well, and what could other people benefit from? I thought well, I'm a great salesman, but in reality, I wasn't a great salesman. There are much better persuaders and presenters than myself. But why was I successful? Why did I win the contest? Uh, you know that. Uh, to, you know, hell I can the Rockies and build a nice house in Burr Ridge in my 30s. I thought, you know, it's not because I'm, I'm good at salesman. I, I'm, it's because I manage my activities well. What kind of activities I ask? Sales activities. So that's how the company, you know, got its name from the beginning. And uh, I, I come to realize that you know, we're certainly not the first one to discover it. It's actually based on a biblical concept. Uh, Galatians 6, 7, uh, whatsoever man soweth, that should he also reap. Not rocket science. You know, Jesus told us 2,000 years ago that we reap what? We reap what we sow. So it's kind of cool because it's very pragmatic and simple and very, uh, I think that's I think that part is left brain where it's just intellectual. It's also very uh, uh, right brain, very, very is inspirational because you're, it's very, very, very emotional because only one person controls your activities, you. And you know what? If you set goals to keep score of your activities, uh, the legacy is long before you and I came along whether it be Al Granham, uh, Maury Stewart, uh, Phil Richards, a lot of guys in this industry have been, have been talking about it for years, but they, they didn't start calling it activity management, so we, we gave it a brand. I think it's 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 kudos to you guys for keeping this, this, this program alive. I mean, it is truly, I mean, I can't say enough that without this, I have, ever since I've started in the business, every year, I keep my SAM calendar. Why? Because it reminds me of where I've been and where I'm going. And it also is uh, is one of the only, what I call, I call this our, it's interesting enough, I call this our our cash register. You know, and, and uh, when you go to a shop or you go somewhere, how often do you open the cash register? Well, you open it numerous times a day, right? You don't just open it at the beginning of the day, put it on the shelf and say, oh, no, we're not going to count the money in it. Right. The way in which you're able to track, keep track, stay on track and also project is this is this type of tool. So question is that let's go old school for a second. Hey, we can do it in paper. But now you guys have progressed and said, OK, we've got some digital formats. We've got some interactive. So what are some of the new things that some of the let's call it older guys like myself, you know, I got a little gray. Here. Okay, so what are some of the what are some of the things that the that's new in Sam that people don't know and 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 that they could tap into through some of the newer resources or opportunities? Well, we certainly went digital when when years ago. Actually, now we've always had digital products to, to do the scorekeeping, but they're two different things because the cal the calendar book is designed to keep it in front of you at all times, as you mentioned you know, prior to the call. It, it, nothing takes place in the calendar book. It, you know, even even Cubby, uh, Franklin Cubby did a, did a big did a big research, and it came. To, they spent like a million bucks to come to conclude there's still a better connection between the mind and the pencil than the mind and the keyboard. So you're right on track with that. They're, they're not they're not mutually exclusive. You don't eliminate paper because of it. But what the what our digital products have always done, and we launched the scoreboard 20 years ago. I mean that was, wow. and in 2002, I. Uh, in 2002, we launched the scoreboard and MetLife, uh, Prudential, AXA, they were all big, big users of it, as well as a lot of different firms and agencies. But the, idea, the number crunching, let the computer do it. But for actual day-to-day -day stuff, you know, that, that takes place in the calendar book itself. And then, all, then, but we also have a pretty, a very cool digital product now called Sam Suite. We renamed it uh, from, from uh, e-scoreboard days. Uh, we were actually able to set goals and keep score on your phone. Uh, and keep those numbers in front of you at all times. Uh, and that's it. People people live on their phones, right? And we all do. We don't. That's one of the first things we, we reach for. Uh, so we 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 ended up coming with a mobile version about three or four years ago. 
and just came out with, and that was only the iOS because 75% of the insurance industry is on Apple. Uh, and then we just launched an Android version. Uh, so that too. Uh, so you're able to set goal and keep score on your phone uh, and be able to actually, it's very, very simple and straightforward. Uh, and this is actually, I know you used it, one of our earlier products, uh, but it, that was, I think before it was, it was even mobile, but you're actually able now to uh, upload a picture of whatever your goal is uh, up right, you know, right from your, right, right from your address book and end up using, using the same suite to do just that. So it's, you know, right at your fingertips and let these numbers roll up to, uh, number one, first, first and foremost, it's a self-management tool. Yeah. You know, as, as an agent, you want to stay focused. It's your cash register. How many, how many calls, how many contacts, how many appointments set and kept what's going on? Uh, what are the statistics that run my business? But if you, and hopefully, as they do, and I do, I, they, I know they do in your firm. Where those numbers can roll up to a manager, uh, to to, gen, to general agent, to even to regional or national, if it's a, if it's a national project. So yeah, so the number crunching, yeah, we we design it with a with the golden rule in mind, and we don't want to. No, I don't want to. I don't want to track numbers manually. So we enable people to do it on the phone. When you look at our phones. AI, let's throw AI in there, right? And let's throw the book in there. Where's the sweet spot? Should we be keeping on our calendars here, on our phones, keeping keeping in touch with our goals? And how do you guys allow for an advisor like myself to input it here, but it show up on my screen so that I don't have to duplicate the effort? Well, there's two different topics you're talking about. One is the numbers and one is the names. Okay. So we have, we have, uh, a, you know, an option, you know, the old E scoreboard, we now call it the SAM board option uh, or the, the scoreboard option. So you just track the numbers. So it, there is no duplication. It just, other than counting up how many calls and contacts you do it and then putting it in your phone. Now, if you do get the, we do have a module that it's called the pipeline module or the SAM, the SAM book kind of uh, coined after the book itself, where it'll do everything the book does. So it can, uh, it can do, uh, you put your names in there, it track your pipeline, et cetera. And it, the only, it does avoid duplication. I mean, if you're able to sync with Microsoft 365, Google, or I think one, one other one, I'm not a high tech guy, uh, but it can sync with your calendar, uh, but it won't sync with your database per se. So it does require double work. Uh, in, some t in the case of not being able to stick with your calendar. But the cool thing about it is if you do, if you do get the uh, SAM book option or the pipeline module, uh, it, it, uh, then you can see the names behind the numbers. Because I know you know when someone tell, when a guy tells you, yeah, I, I, had, I, had, uh, I, I had five appointments last week. Well, who are they with? <laughs> It'd be nice to go hit a button and go, oh, yeah, that's, that's who they're with. And hey, let's talk about that, and let's see how you're looking to coach them. You have a name behind the net numbers. So, but we do have two modules. Again, we're we're both on the golden rule and the law of the farmer, and uh, we try to make it as simple as possible for people to do. Uh, every product was has been designed by our our clients, like you, saying, "Hey, can I do this? Hey, can I do that?" If you guys get tell us an easier way to do it, we'll build it. We'll build it in the system. So you're saying that you are. Systems driven, agent, advisor, altruistic. Like so, you're listening to the voice of the advisors. You're listening to what we want. We're you're listening to what we're saying we need, and you guys are baking it in the cake. Exactly, exactly. And you know, we, that's the way we started. Uh, we started out going agent to agent, and then all of a sudden, the manager is saying, "Hey, let's." And the agency started saying, "Hey, let's buy the agency," and then. And so many agencies were buying it. And we were in 45 states in the first five years. We were in business. We've sold over a million and a half of them. Uh, but then uh, the home offices jumped on board. And unfortunately, sometimes it, it became a, more of a leadership tool rather than a self-management tool. But first and foremost, it's designed to help them run their business. If, if the agent advisor is our is our true client, and all, all eyes, just like NAFA's eyes, I know, is to protect the industry and help them help develop it. And help uh, help help them succeed ultimately, and that's what our focus is. So well, I think here's you. What I'm, interested in. I'm interested in this. So you've done this a million and a half copies sold. 
Chris, you've used this, et cetera. We have so many people right now who are really focused in on recruiting new agents in, right? And trying to bring in new agents and make sure that they're sex- successful and they don't wash out. Can you actually tell at this point by the adoption or not adoption of the sand planner? Like, it, like, do you see, is it the people that resist it? Can you, can you already say like, oh, look, I'm, I'm already saying this is going to be a red flag indicator that they're not going to probably do well in this business. Like what's your take now on, on is having seen the adoption or not adoption of this tool for this long in the ability to say who can, who's got the stick to itiveness to make it? You know, uh, we have a, we've always had a, a applications to help track recruiting activities as well. I, uh, and I, uh, I, and, but, but we had, a, it was Matt life. We did it first after about five or 10 years, we did an extensive study and we found that, that the, um, uh, the ones that succeeded, like the chances of, 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 of their time, the retention rate of an advisor was uh, like five or 10 times greater if they moved from, uh, I think it was what, uh, three appointments or about two appointments a day to three appointments a day or whatever, whatever n- that number was. There are statistics that you can track if you dig deep enough. Uh, but uh, certainly the people that um, uh, people that use it are more successful in general. And, uh, and it's, it, Anyway, it's a best practice that's created, that's helped build more careers than any other best practice out there, as Chris had mentioned early on. Uh, so it's a, you know, that intuitively it makes sense. If set goals, keep score of your activities and take responsibility for your actions and results, which is, which is key as our habit number five, uh, you'll, you'll be more successful. Isn't that what we all want is more success? You know, I, 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 you mentioned a couple things, um, and I just want to break down a couple things. Is sales? You know, we're in a business of, you know, the more transactions you do, the more opportunities you get. Then the more opportunity, the more times you take a shot at it, the more opportunities you're going to have. So we are in a sales business. I understand that some people out, out there are convinced that we're not, but. Technically, we are in a sales business. We we get paid to sell products, whether we're selling ourselves as a product, or we're selling a service as a product, or we're serving, or we're 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 selling something, right? But activity. Why is I, I just want to ask this in, in in your history of working with advisors and being an advisor, right? So you're you've come from both sides. Why is activity so important? I mean, once you get past a, a certain point, you know, why do I have to track activity? Like, why? Why do that? I mean, that's painful. Well, it's a it's a merciless mirror, as my mother used to say about our haircuts. Uh, you know, when you do look at the statistics. But you know, I, I love I love the book uh, uh, "Start with Why" by Simon Sinek, and that's and yeah. clearly you got it. You got to start. You have you have to know your why. But you can have you have the best why in the world unless you have some activity to it. Nothing happens. You know, if you want to fill up a glass of water, you got to pour the, You got to pour it. If you want to put that ball in the hoop, you got to, you got to, you got to do it. Or as, or as Walter Bond used to say, he practiced 500, 500 shots a day. I, you got to get, it's not just a matter of quantity, it's a matter of quality. I, though I had an ad, agent out in, uh, actually uh, one of your counterparts out in Los Angeles the other day, I, I, Jermaine Carter, who had a good quote. Uh, he said, it doesn't, this is, this is not a skill business, it's, it's an activity business. <laughs> and there's some truth to that. It's not a knowledge business. It's an activity business. You could have all the you could have all the all the great um, uh, intentions in the world, but unless you pick up the ball and throw it open, <laughs> you're, 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 you're you're just not going to survive. And I, there was a guy back with the guy named John Selder. You might remember that name from over the years. He's up north, uh, t- north of you now. Because I'm, yeah, he, did you overhear? Did you overhear that? Did you catch that? That I, I moved from Illinois. I did. I see the. Uh- Lincoln behind you though. So I'm assuming that, you, you know, I know you're a Lincoln guy. I remember <laughs> you guys weren't too far from our office actually. No, it was about seven or eight miles. Uh, yeah. But uh, after on the 40th, the 40th anniversary of my living in Illinois, uh, the land of land of Lincoln, uh, I said, you know what? It's it just, God wants me to go elsewhere. And, uh, and I've always, I've always loved the Nashville, Tennessee area and decided. And, and, but the cool thing is I talked to the mayor here, <laughs> and uh, I am Jamie Clary. I said, so Jamie, is it is 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 Lincoln? How how is view, Lincoln view down here? You know, kind of a seller in state. And uh, he said, oh, very positively. Now, the you know, Andrew Jackson dominates because he was from Nashville, but Lincoln was born just a hundred miles away. 
up Main Street. So my Main oh. Street goes through here, goes right to where Lincoln was born. So I ended up, so I still have a great attachment to Lincoln, of course, I, as I always will, based on my 50 Capitals trip and all the all the Lincolns I look for around the country. Uh, but uh, but we I did decide did decide to move, and uh, it's, it was it was painful, but uh, it was I knew I knew it was the right thing to do. I'm looking forward to the next chapter of my life. Well, they do say that nothing happens until something happens. And so you're, you're, you're preparing yourself for the next opportunity where you're going to continue to thrive and grow and, you know, nothing happens on accident. So, you know, you are a gift to the industry. We appreciate you so much. I see a little thing behind you and I see it and it says, win the day. Yes, sir. So, Tell us a little bit about that. Where does that kind of come from, and, and what does that really mean? You know, it, it finally, it, it took us years to get down to this this focus of what we what are really what we really do is we help you win the day, and and it's a if you take care of the days, the weeks, and the months, and the quarters, the years take care of themselves. Uh, and that's also something I realized when I was in the hospital one time is that you know you're we have God gives us a gift, right? Give us a day, our our only bread, our only bread. So it's that it's a we have we have to be the best of every 24 hours that we have and and the gifts and the, and the gifts that God gives us so if we help people focus better for every 24 hours uh the rest of it takes care of itself little Dale Carnegie day tight compartments yeah <laughs> yes they, yes yeah yeah, I, yeah yeah Dale Carnegie and also Earl Nightingale would become what we think about we move the direction of our most dominant thoughts I know Chris knows all these and I, and I don't know. I know you're recognizing a lot of them as well, uh, but the uh, you know, it's a matter of uh, you got you got to do your best every day, and it's it's tough. We're human. We're fickle. We're fragile. Uh, yeah, these tools are designed to help weaken or help strengthen people's natural weaknesses. And so fashion. I'm going to add something. I'm going to add something, Mickey, to what you said. So what I've done in the years is I learned this from Granum. Actually, I was one of the the young ones. So uh, you probably don't know this, but I was one of the young ones at Northwestern Mutual that had a chance to spend some time with Al Graham. I was in what they call the up and coming, what they call the next generational group, because I did 100 lives within six months at, at Northwestern. Wow. When I did that, I was able to join this kind of exclusive group of agents. And we would go once every six months to Chicago, and Granham would spend the morning with us, kind of just Al Graham and us to death. Okay. Um, Granum is, is what we used to call them. But one of the things that I understood about this system, specifically about what you're saying, is activity is different than productivity. But you don't have productive people without doing activity. And so if you control your behaviors, you can control the activity. So, so from our perspective, this tool became... The person who just put in the most amount of effort on a daily basis won, period, regardless of how good you were, regardless of all those other skills. <laughs> so this became more of a stat stuffing sheet for us. It was like, okay, how many did you get? How many did you get? I got five. I got three. I got two. But you would never know unless those those columns were there. You would never know if you didn't know where to put that information and that data. And then you would never know what you did the day before. Because if you ask agents today, hey, how many people did you meet yesterday? They'll say, oh, I think it was three. Mm -hmm. Right? And I say, in your cash register, let me ask you a question. Would you know how many nickels are in there? They say, yes. How many, do you, would you know how many dimes are in there? Absolutely. Would you know how many dollar bills are in there? Absolutely. <laughs> well, if you knew how many of those people in there were in there, you know exactly how many nickels, pennies, and dimes of people that you met like yesterday. And all of a sudden, an epiphany. So I think what you're saying is that active creates productivity and productivity creates happy people, especially, especially in our industry. It buys you time in this industry to grow and develop into what you want to be, become. So this mm. tool is an activity management. Notice uh, um, Suzanne, he did not say this is a productivity management system. Yeah, it is an activity, which is a behavior. This, this here manages behavior. And because of that, that allows for us as advisors to be better with our behaviors that naturally lead to more opportunities, that naturally lead to more success, that naturally lead to all those other things. I think advisors, Mickey, have gotten it backwards. 
is they focus so much on the productivity, they forget about the what basics. it takes to do yeah. it. Everybody wants to play in the everybody wants to play in the World Series. Nobody's right. willing to in the minor leagues or go actually practice all those other days. Why? Because that's the hard thing. So this is about behavior and creating habits and rituals. I say that because it is true. It truly is. If, if I didn't have that tool, I would have to be all over the place. Oh, well, you know, I don't... One, one of the phrases I use is activity begets opportunity, right? So the more you put that up activity, when you know it, you become more lucky. The more opportunity, opportunity comes your way, you're able to do better. So you get that positive feedback cycle. So then you're more right likely to keep with it. But the thing that that we've heard and the reason we wanted to bring this back into the membership uh, and Chris, I don't know if I've shared this piece with you either. We listen all day long to our members. And what they keep saying is this type of training, this type of access, this type of know-how that used to be so prevalent is no longer there, right? And NAFA is now being able to provide that and step in and fill that void. Because somewhere along the line, I think, Chris, the the opportunities you've had with those special, um, you know, agent circles and things, somehow they seem like they've gone by the wayside. At least that's what our members are telling us. They're saying they don't get that same sales training, that same uh, nurturing anymore, and NAFA still provides that. So we're happy to be able to plug kind of that hole, especially for the young advisors. We're hearing that all the time, right? That they're, they, they're, the expectation is still that there's going to be a 12% washout rate, but there's even less support and tools now for it. Yeah, I think some of the companies, and I don't know, Vicki, you can, you can add just add some comments to this. I think some of the companies have gone away from what I would call the traditional stuff. They've said, oh, there's got to be another way. There's got to be another way. There's got to be another way. No, this is the way, <laughs> right? And so I think companies have got to get back to the bread and butter. You know, they've got to get back to how we've gotten here. You know, Suzanne, you keep track of everything. I keep track of everything. The devil is in the detail. And so we've got to do a fantastic job, a great job at and promoting these type of programs, these opportunities to connect with with people like like Mickey, and making sure that, that we don't have, um, they know where to find the great jewels like this. And I'm not bragging on this guy. Listen, I'm not bragging on this because he's promoting this. He had no idea I even had them in my office, <laughs> right? They actually, when he on before this, just to give you guys an idea, before we came on before this, they were like, "You still have yours? <laughs> Are you joking?" Like this is the deal. Like you, know, this is like the jersey you put on every day. Like this is this is what we do. Like you know, this is this is part of the DNA of my office. To give you guys how we use it is that every advisor for the first ninety days in their business, they have to walk around with this manual and they have to learn it to be able to teach it to other people. And if they don't learn this, their odds of success doesn't mean they're not going to make it. But their odds of success in my history, and I've recruited over a hundred agents at Mass Mutual here. A bunch of different places. And I can tell you, the people that are serious about their success, the people that are serious about this manual, their opportunity to succeed goes way up because they're like, they're engaged. This engages people in a process. So it's not a problem. It's either the process or it's That's a problem. So you actually make them not only learn it, but you turn around and have them teach others. Yes. Which means that they really know it because you can't yes. teach unless you really understand Correct. it. They're not just that's familiar hard. with it. No, they know good. it's like what's what's every definition mean? Oh well, I think it means this. That means you don't know it, right? Yeah, right. Being familiar is not being a you know is not necessarily what we're looking at here. We we want you to know it like the back of your hand. It's just like when we run plays in sports. Yep. You can't run around with a playbook. You got to put the playbook down, and you got to now have ran it enough times to know that this is what I need to do, and I need to be able to do this, and I need to be able to do this. You don't sit around and say, oh, let me hold on, coach. Let me look in the playbook real quick. I think that's play number five. Well, I think that's become prevalent because it's the same thing. Everybody wants to run the play. Nobody wants to do all the sprints and all the lifts that lead up to running the play. There's right. something we've lost there in that that idea that it is that constant work ethic and a little bit each day, a little bit each day, that somehow I feel like we've we skipped ahead. It's, you know, it's very, everybody wants the, they want some prize. Yeah. If the old, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Chris, I, I couldn't have choreographed this, this, uh, this uh, podcast. Uh, and, and, and so again, coincidence, things happen for a reason. Uh, and, and thank you, Suzanne, for, for, uh, recording, for quarterbacking it. 
Uh, but I could have chore choreographed it any better. I, you're a, a great enthusiast of activity management. You're a practitioner. You're a leader. You're doing for your agents and advisors what what Granham did did in the beginning. And we're just we're, you and I are just standing on the shoulders of people that came before us. You know, this yeah. is not a new concept. Uh, but we just you know we don't activities produce results. Improve the activities. The results are going to follow. We didn't make it up. We just tried to make it easy. You know, I did. We had Joey Davenport on here before. And uh, if you go to Hoopus Network, I'm on there talking about the importance of activity management and how it links to. I actually mentioned the SAM calendar. I actually mentioned the calendar and and like our OCS system. And you know, I, I talk about it because it's part of what made it so that I'm here. It, I mean, when I tell you, I share with this every week is that I'm not here by circumstance. I'm here because I put in the work. I'm also here because I want to see the opportunity for others to be for it to be better by growing the things that we learned and taking this and actually growing the tools and making sure they know what the tools are. They know how to get to them and they have somebody to reach back and help them learn it, not only learn it, but become masters at it. And I think that's super, super duper, super key. So. And again, now we can now we have metrics mm -hmm. of what we, we can, what we can measure, and, and Mickey, you know this, right? We can't manage what we don't measure, right? And this allows us to measure right. everything. Everything it down to it's like you know, it's the kinesthetic learning to write it down. Like I know, yeah. it's, or some people say, "Well, can't who who needs nobody writes anything down?" Are you kidding me? Every college kid that goes through anything nowadays, every athlete, they still write it down. Writing yeah. it down makes all the difference. You remember, it, it helps you to remember it. Yes. You know, Vince Lombardi, I, I, I digress, but Vince Lombardi, those who you don't know, those who you know, he's one of the greatest coaches, like, quote unquote, in, in NFL history. Right. And one of the things he used to do is he used to give his players uh, notebooks when they used to walk into film and he used to collect the notebooks after. And he said that people would retain 70 percent more if they wrote it down. So they would give them they would not only watch the film, they would discuss yeah. it and they would write down notes because his quote was champions take copious notes. This is a copious note taker. Mm -hmm. It's a great tool. And listen, he didn't even know he could put his logo on it, Mickey. Now that Chris knows he can put his own brand on that oh, thing, yeah. right? What a great way to brand your agency and build up more awareness. People didn't even know. So make sure everybody knows that, especially our 100%. I want to put this, listen, I want to put my face on the front <laughs> and that logo <laughs> and, <laughs> with me saying right. something pretty profound, right? <laughs> yeah. Endorsed by Chris Candy. That's right. Well, Chris, I, I still have your cell phone number, so we'll we'll uh, we'll definitely connect. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, Suzanne. I think we can. You want to go to the lightning round, or I we got some more questions? The lightning round. Yeah. Well, just I'll say one last plug. So, if you're an APA member, uh, visit the member portal. There's more information in there, and you can get all of uh, the information on the SAM planner and a nice discount that Mickey has provided us. If you're not an APA member, why not? No time like the present. Please join us. Belong. Uh, Nafa.org forward slash join. And Chris, I think we're ready for the lightning round. You know, my, my ploy out there to all of our Nafa members is we do business with people. They do business with us. So let's support and continue to support the tools necessary for our agents, our advisors, ourselves to be successful in the future. Don't forget where you came from. You didn't start where you are. You started out doing the bread and butter. And that's things like th simple, simple 
things, not the super complex cases and not the super, all this other stuff. We started out keeping track and that's how we know where we've come from and that's how we know where we're going. So Suzanne, let's do it. So, 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 so Mickey, you know, we have a little fun. People may not know you, but you know, people might know of you. They may not know you. So we have a little fun with this. And, and again, it's, I'm not going to ask you questions about, you know, what you did when you were 10 years old and you were running around and your mom, your mom was looking for you. We're not going to ask you questions like that. We're not going to ask you questions about, you know, things that, um, you know, are embarrassing. So we're just going to ask you questions, just kind of have a fireside type of chat, but we'll ask you questions, whatever the deal is, whatever comes top of mind, just what you answer. There's no right or wrong answers. Just we're curious. We want to get to know you a little bit. So is that fair? Well, yes, I, I just want to make sure that I, I'm going to have enough power in my uh, my temporary office here. Uh, we move in our office space for another week or two, but my battery is running low. So if if I, if I have to jump jump to the side here, you know why. So okay, and uh, but I also like to say that the and, and and Chris, thanks for not only sharing your your enthusiasm for Sam, but sharing some of your insights to helping advisors and agents succeed. I mean, you've you're uh, it's no wonder you're you've been as, as successful as you are. Uh, I've been hearing about you for years. I see it all over the social media and, and of course through NAFA. Uh, but, uh, and, and I hope I'm sure I'll hear, I'll hear just about just even more about you uh, being out of state, but uh, thank you for, thank you for all that. You're, you are uh, truly an inspiration to all of us. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. We got a lot of work to do, Suzanne. Yes, we, we do. have work to do. Work we to look do. forward to taking NAFA to the next level. So yes. with that being said, Mickey, here we go. So, uh, first thing, Mickey, you're from Illinois. So, you know, I have to ask the question, Cubs or White Sox? I don't have a preference. I, I was always an Illinois fan. I was, I, I sided with the Cubs, but I was, Bo Jackson was one of our neighbors and residents. So I, I tend to I, and go, go for them too. So, but, but you know, I'm not from Illinois originally. I'm okay. originally from Pennsylvania. Okay. So if you had to choose one, because, you know, in Chicago, they make you go to a game or say stay home, which <laughs> would you go to? Gotta go Cubs. Okay, so you gotta get what it comes. Okay, so you, so that one was easy, right? Okay, cool. So so with that being said, now now we'll go we'll go at a little faster pace, right? Favorite sports star. Oh, that'd be a, that'd be a tough one. Favorite sports I'm star. I'm all time. Yeah, I, I gotta say Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson, why? Uh, he was one of, one of the greatest, one of the best. Uh, he's a uh, uh, and and I got to know him personally. He's a he's a very well balanced guy. He's, he keeps his humility in check. Uh, he's a great family man. Uh, he's not just he wasn't just a great athlete. Uh, he's one of the most motivational speakers I've ever met. And uh, I and I just as far as record, I haven't got a clue. Uh, but uh, definitely definitely the one I would hide. Uh, I, of course, I was talking a little bit of Mickey Mantle, who I was named after. But you know. Uh, yeah. uh, he, he, his his personal life wasn't as much of it. What do what you really it's hold it? That over his knee, though. I don't know. Bo can like hit him with the arrow and like sling the deer over and run. Like <laughs> Jackson's pretty impressive guy. Yeah, I saw. <laughs> but he, he he endorsed my book uh, called Big Goals, Short Deadlines. I, I if I didn't send you a copy of it, I, I will. I uh, but he said uh, I think he's done things that that uh, most of us only dreamed of. And have Bo Jackson say that I'm like I, I was like I almost like teared up. But I should have kept the first part uh, where he said, I first met Mickey about 10 or 15 years ago in a gym. And he looked like Gilligan and had legs like a coffee table. And now he's my mayor. <laughs> All right. So uh, if people could des describe you, your friends could describe you, how would they describe you? Uh, two things that re resonate most now these days is, is you know, I'm about God, family, and country. I didn't know. And uh, I, I, my old company is, is a patriotic faith-based company, but of course we want to you know, do well in our business, you know, for our family. So wonderful. But, uh, wonderful. Your proudest moment as a, you know, in the insurance and financial services industry. Well, proudest moment, that'd be a, that'd be a tough one. Um, or your, or your, 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 your proudest accomplishment. Do that. Well, Pro's accomplishment still is the 50 Capitals trip uh, that I took. Uh, it was 50 Capitals in 50 days I, I, for love of country and turned out to be for love of God and country. I, and uh, 
But to, to finish that and have the whole NAFA uh, Illinois board greet me on the steps uh, of the of the of the old Illinois State Capitol and time their annual board meeting uh, to be when I finish the trip. The goal was 50 capitals in 50 days. I did it in 44. Uh, when I walked in that that rotunda uh, and I saw the NAFA board, Sarah Deckard, John Wheeler, now uh, Lou Buffano, uh, uh, Eric Ekstrom, uh, Bob Sturkowicz, uh, and a few other ones. Just I, I I cried. That was probably one of my one of my uh, proudest moments was was finishing that trip. But also that trip would not have been impossible without all my NAFA connections and all, what I learned in this business. What you learned on the on the on the court is that activities produce results. And if I I I use the same concepts to run the business as I did to finish that trip. And that's what I'm all so excited about sharing with people today. That it doesn't matter what you're looking to succeed at. You need, you need to set goals and keep score and manage those activities. Awesome. Uh, Mickey, you're from Illinois, so I got to ask this question. Uh, deep dish pizza or or thin crust? Got got to go thick. Got to go, got to go stuffed. Stuffed crust pizza. Got it. All right. Um, last couple, last couple questions for you. Uh, one big one. Favorite quote. Yeah, I have to say it's a uh, we reap what we sow. Reap what we sow. Five, last. five little words that can change someone's life because by just by saying it is a claim of responsibility that mm-hmm. that I reap what I sow, and it's very inspirational. I think, and uh, that's that's still a. Uh, one of my favorites, a lot called called Law of the Farmer, has its roots in the Bible, but uh, really quite simple. We reap what we sow in every aspect of our lives, uh, but in sales, you get back on it. Wow. All right. Last question for you. If you could go back in history and have dinner with anyone, whether they're living now or they've passed away, who would it be and why? Hey, hey. First, Gut feeling is Ronald Reagan uh, or John Paul II, but I think Ronald Reagan I can relate to. And uh, I always love the fact that his humble beginnings uh, and uh, he didn't just do it for thing. It was all about him, his ability to bring people together. Uh, and uh, that's why, you know, I, I, I should have, uh, I should have figured that out after, after he, after he left office, figure out some way of, of, uh, of doing that. But, that's one 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 of my many regrets. And then and then last question is this. This is the bonus question. If you could say anything to NAFA, NAFA Nation, to advisors starting in the business in their first five years today, what would you tell them about the importance of having something that they can keep track with? You know, we Earl Nightingale said it best. He said that we become what we think about. Uh, we move in the direction of our most dominant thoughts. And so yet you need to keep the, your your eyes focused on 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 the prize, but but also on the daily activities. Uh, you know, it, your your success is in your hands, and and I yes, you need great mentors. As as I know, I know Chris and Suzanne have seen in the past, and, and we've all learned from people in the past. But uh, ultimately, it's up to you, and you're in control of your own success, your own destiny. Uh, but you need to do the right activities every day, uh, and not leave success a chance. So. Thank you, Mickey. We're, we're so happy. As Mickey said, every day, every day. <laughs> so, Suzanne, well, win the day, win the day. Love it. Win the day. Suzanne, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna wrap us up, or you want to? You have any comments before I close us out? Well, I would say Mickey is going to join us at the National Leadership Conference this December. So we're excited right. to uh, excited to welcome him, and you can meet him in person. And we're going to have more great conversations just like this going forward. Wonderful. Mickey, do you have anything else for NAFA Nation before we close? You know, I love NAFA. I always have. Uh, they, NAFA's got your back because uh, they, they have a target on their back. Uh, that every they're, They've been, yeah, I, I even did t-shirts years ago regarding that. I just, uh, I, if anybody does not support the associations that support the industry, it's got to be brain dead. <laughs> you know, you've got to do it. You got to, you got to uh, support and they, in particular, because they're not only looking to protect the industry, looking to help develop and help build careers. So I, uh, I applaud anybody as a member, and I encourage everybody that's in the insurance and financial service industry to join. Wonderful. Thank you, uh, Mickey. Thank you, Suzanne. You know, it's always wonderful spending time with the both of you. 
Um, I'll close this out. Uh, thanks for tuning in to Advisors Today podcast, where we promote, uplift, and support the collective good of all advisors out there. We look forward to seeing you again next week, same time, same place. And listen, if you haven't got your SAM calendar for 2024, go get it. You know, there is no secret in the sauce. This is the secret sauce. I'll tell you that this has made me lots of money. And so if you're interested in making a lots of money, um, go get you one. Um, if you want to know how to use it, I'll actually show you how to use it. I'll volunteer. I'm, I'm pretty good at using it. Um, but my key is that if you're going to use it, you need to become a master at it. So thanks everyone for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us for NAPA's Advisor Today podcast series. Make sure to subscribe to get future episodes. And if you're interested in coming on the show, let us know.